Welcome in everyone to the Gun Politics Podcast brought to you by the American Firearms Association. Coming to you from the swamp here in Washington, D.C. I'm Patrick Parsons, Executive Vice President, alongside my colleague, the president of our organization, Chris Doerr. Today on the show, we have a very special guest. He is the lead sponsor of the newly introduced National Stand Your Ground Act. He's the host of the increasingly popular podcast, Firebrand. He is hated by the deep state. Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates is on the show with us today. Just a few moments ago, we talked to him about his Stand Your Ground bill, why he's the expert on this whole issue here in Washington, D.C., and how he wants to get rid of the unconstitutional, lawless ATF. Congressman, thanks for coming on the Gun Politics Podcast. We're glad to have you here. Well, thanks for guys for having me, and also for the enthusiasm of your members. Uh, certainly, something that's driving some action here on the Hill. Yeah, exactly. And we want to get right into your bill, the National Stand Your Ground Act. It's HR six two four eight for everybody watching. You know, one of the things I've noticed about you, traveled around the country with you a little bit and some some, some uh, political tours, but you're a great communicator and you can really take an issue and take it to the grassroots and break it down from top to bottom. So for everybody out there watching, take the bill right now, go from start to finish and let everybody know why you did it and how it's going to benefit gun owners and our Second Amendment rights. Well, it's really about whether or not Americans ought to have a duty to retreat if someone is intending to commit a felony against them outside their home. Now, as a consequence of the advocacy of many gun rights groups, we've got Stand Your Ground in many states, including my state of Florida. But I worry about my fellow Floridians when they go elsewhere. Will they somehow have a legal duty to retreat? So right now, in some of these blue states and some of these blue jurisdictions, if you're outside your home, you've taken on uh, the personal protection obligation to have your firearm with you, and someone... Uh, charges to you, is threatening to beat you, rob you, steal from you, harm uh, your spouse or children or your loved ones, uh, you have to contemplate whether or not retreat would give you a safe line of escape. That's crazy. You know, in, in Florida, as a result of our standard ground law, you can meet force with force, including lethal force. So a lot of groups focus on uh, making sure that that firearm can be on your person, can be concealed carried or open carried or, or whatever. But that really will be useless if you're not able to access your firearm and to protect yourself in the event of a violent attack. And so uh, I eliminate the duty to retreat everywhere in America uh, and ensure that, that we're able to have the full utilization of our personal protection. That's a great point that you bring up there. A lot of, a lot of the, the state level gun rights, uh, people are always talking about constitutional carry and it's the ability to get that firearm on your hip in the first place without begging government permission. But this is all about what happens after you're forced to use that firearm for self-defense. Absolutely. And uh, it really, I think, protects the law abiding person against someone that would reasonably commit a felony against you. Now, obviously, my law doesn't let folks walk down the street and start engaging in vigilanteism. Right, right. Uh, the question is a reasonable person test. Would a right. reasonable person in your shoes believe that you were in a circumstance where a forcible felony was about to be committed against you? And, you know, if, if the goal of gun rights groups is just to have you uh, with an accessible firearm, uh, in theory, but not in practice, well then I think we've fallen short of, um, of protecting people. And, and there have been a few, I think, principal examples uh, where we've seen folks um, in, in a very vulnerable position, particularly women, by the way. There, there yeah, are a lot definitely. of women who have come out to support this national legislation uh, because they don't want to be in a position where you know a, a jury is uh, judging whether or not they should have retreated instead of uh, utilizing uh, lethal force. Yeah. Well, Chris, um, state level politics is your cup of tea. I mean, you've been all over the country. Congressman Gates, you know, and some of the research that you know, we didn't know about before we started hearing about your bill on the National yeah. Senior Ground Act, the Trayvon Martin case, I believe you were, you know, 2013 back in Florida. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of gun owners have no clue about. I mean, a lot of us see you on Fox News and stuff, and I don't think they know the, the major role that you played in the Florida Stand Your Ground uh, uh, 
basically trial after the trial in 2000, I guess it was 13 then, after the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman trial. Can you explain what that was like and kind of bring gun owners through uh, through that little time when you were in the in that, sure. cha cha that chairman spot? Yeah, I was chairman of the Criminal Justice Subcommittee in the State House of Representatives. And following the Trayvon Martin death, you had every radical group in the country. You had uh, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson <laughs> calling for Florida to repeal this right. law. And we showcased a number of circumstances where African Americans, where Hispanics yes. had used Stand Your Ground for their protection, legally and otherwise. And uh, so I put on the hearings and they were calling for my head and I rather uh, famously said, we weren't gonna change one damn comma oh, of, of the Stand Your Ground law. <laughs> yes. and, and what was interesting is after we put on those experiences of African American women using the Stand Your Ground law to protect themselves, we actually not only got every Republican to mm -hmm. support the bill, a majority of the Democrats on the committee that I chaired ended up voting to keep the bill wow. in its current form. And so I think wow. that that shows us that there actually could be more bipartisanship on this than we think. When you start to look at uh, urban communities, Democrat districts, there are folks there who do want the full access of their personal protection. So uh, telling those stories of people, I think was a really important persuasive tool. Yeah, no, I mean, I saw some of the pictures, you know, you're sitting there in the a chairman's chair and you know you got some red shirt radicals and those type of folks out hanging in the audience we're used to that at the state level but um no i mean this is a great bill guys um and we're going to talk about the atf here in just a second i think current co-sponsors on your legislation we've got congresswoman green gosar from arizona mark wayne mullen from uh oklahoma we have Stuby from florida i think there's a couple of others gomert gomert from yeah. texas is on there guys so if you didn't hear your congressman get on the horn tell them to get on this bill and, and and back this legislation now last week what we observed in the gun rights community is really a, a 360 from the biden administration or a 180 i guess i should say yeah. thwarted in the congress of course in the house they can get through a lot of what they want on on gun control but the senate's a problem obviously but over the weekend, we saw, and this was two weekends ago, the ATF uh, published their federal registry um, or whatever they call it. I forget exactly the, the term. 80% um, lowers in pistol braces. You had some experience with that on the Honey Badger a couple years ago. I think you wrote a letter about. Um, then Monday, we find out 920 million gun owner records are, are saved at the ATF. Wednesday or Tuesday, Biden goes to New York City with Eric Adams with Merrick Garland promising billions of dollars more for the ATF for gun safety. Um, so that's clearly an executive bureaucratic, um, you can't do anything about me to stop this move. You're on the Judiciary Committee. What can we do about this? I know we're in the minority, but as we potentially move into the majority, tell us some of your thoughts as to how we can handle the ATF. Because gun owners are like, what the hell are we supposed to do? Well, it's, yeah. it's very important to understand the field that we have to fight on. Uh, even during the Trump presidency, there was a deep state over at the ATF, right. and they yes. were really hard on gun owners. Right. I mean, we should have done more during the Trump presidency to clear out some of the anti-gun people who have found their way yeah. to the ATF. Uh, and we had to constantly pepper them with reminders that they were exceeding the authority that Congress had given them uh, by limiting certain options and modifications for those who were totally law-abiding citizens. And the, the ATF is out trying to convert law-abiding citizens into criminals, yeah. into felons in yeah. some cases, and it's a very abusive utilization of government power. Now. You're totally right that in today's Congress, in a 50-50 Senate, where you've got Democrats representing rural states like uh, you know, the, the uh, West Virginia, uh, or states where they really like their guns like Arizona and uh, Angus right. King in Maine, you know, these folks are uh, uh, aware of how uh, their constituents really regard their Second Amendment rights. And so the battlefield that exists is in the bureaucratic rulemaking space. And right now, as we're gathered here strategizing about how to vindicate people's rights, I assure you there are people at the ATF trying to think, well, is there a way we can reinterpret our authority or our power? And one of the most egregious examples is what you mentioned, database collection on yeah. firearm transfers. Building these databases is the first step to widespread confiscation of firearms. And I know that sounds alarming, but what we know is that these people don't build these lists just to let them sit on the right. shelves and collect dust. They're building them to use them. It is terrifying. And in terms of what we have to do about it, we have to expose it first. We have to rein them in. And we have the power to impeach 
the people who lead these entities. And if there's not enough guts to impeach Joe Biden, maybe there'll be some guts to, to impeach the people who are exceeding their legal authority. Yeah, I think I think that's that's it's a common sentiment um, amongst the gun rights community. They're like, um, you know, what are we what are we going to do about the ATF and how much appetite is there to rein these people in when we get to power? We see this at the state level. Whenever Republicans finally take the majority, we see them kind of pull back and they don't really want to push the envelope like that. How much of an appetite is there? on Congress, on, on Capitol Hill to do these kinds of things? Well, first, make no mistake, you've got Republicans who are tacitly in favor of ratcheting up gun control. I mean, right. you have Republicans who want to make the databases and the information sharing uh, so seamless that when somebody makes a purchase or a transfer in one place, uh, all of a sudden you've got you've got all co kind of nodes going off in other places, right. and that is not what our founders no. intended. That, that 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 violates the value set that undergirds the Second Amendment. Right. So so that's very important. Um, calling out those Republicans, and I would suggest maybe defeating them in primaries in some circumstances is necessary. Um, but also we have to start playing offense. Yes. You know, it can't just be about what bad gun control we stop. We have to think about the, the bundle of rights that our citizens enjoy. We have to say, where are those rights in danger? And let's go out and, and actually expand rights rather than just trying to protect what we have. And that's why I think the national stand your ground law is so important because it, 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 it that gives people more flag. opportunity. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were joking about this the other day. It's kind of like when you go through the, the body scanner at the airport, does anybody actually believe that they delete those pictures when you go right. through there? Right. Like, and they we deal probably with this. delete mine. Well, right, for very different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we hear about this at the state level. We're going to expunge the records over at the Georgia Bureau of Investigation or what have you. After five years, they're going to be expunged. Well, what are they going to do? Hillary Clinton be bleach bit this stuff? And I know you. <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe, maybe we should hire Hillary yeah. Clinton to be yeah. the one. Th then yeah. the expunging would actually happen at the ATF, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I think. I think you're right to be on offense, um, and we saw this bill and we loved it, and we, and we told you that. But on the ATF, and I'm not a asking yeah. for solutions right now. I'm just Investigations saying investigation. We get maybe the impeachment. Yeah, we get yeah. the majority back. I think there's subcommittees and everything else, and and we need people on that committee, um, judiciary, or maybe there's other committees that have oversight, what have you, on on the ATF. But 5,700 employees. Schumer also in New York City the other day is asking right. to double the budget. So what are we going to have? 11,500 employees next. I mean, they want an ATF agent for every gun owner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> before, before we're done with it. Yeah. And, and yeah. we talked about it on a show the other day. Um, you know, things are going to get worse before they get better. So um, we need people like you taking the fight to the enemy here, staying on offense. And in fact, I think gun owners are going to love the clip that we play here. It was in Dalton, Georgia. There was a rally. My old yeah. boss, Congresswoman Green, yes. you guys had these great rallies. Um, and let's play that clip and then we'll just talk about it for just a second and then wrap up. We have a second amendment in this country and I think we have an obligation to use it. The Second Amendment, this is a little history lesson for all the fake news media. The Second Amendment is not about, it's not about hunting, it's not about recreation, it's not about sports. The Second Amendment is about maintaining within the citizenry the ability to maintain an armed rebellion against the government if that becomes necessary. I hope it never does, but it sure is important to recognize the founding principles of this nation and to make sure that they are fully understood. Oh, they hate that. We, that that'll be the part that gets me like kicked off YouTube, right? Talking about our rights and our freedoms. Have you seen who Joe Biden wants to put in as the head of ATF? This is someone who has dedicated their career to depriving law-abiding citizens of their access to rights. Gun control is not going to deter the criminals. And where I come from in North Florida and where you come from in Georgia, gun control just means we have a steady aim. Yeah, Congressman, that's what gun owners love to hear. I mean, it's it's just factual, right? Oh, that that clip was played all over MSNBC and CNN. Matt Gates is calling people to arms to overthrow the government, which of course, you know, couldn't be further from the truth. But 
people misunderstand the Second Amendment. And part of maybe what we have to do when we control these committees is educate folks that yeah. might not be as familiar with firearms as folks in my district or folks in the great state of Georgia, but in places where firearms are scary and foreign and unfamiliar, maybe we need an education as to the history and the values that really uh, support the Second Amendment. And it's not about hunting, and it's not about you know uh, uh, self-protection. It is literally about maintaining within the citizenry this balance of power, this ballast against tyranny. And that's, that's what our constituents believed, and um, you know, I, I think it's what mine still do. I think in the gun rights community, People always kind of thought, when we talked in that way, when we said, well, the Second Amendment is what guarantees our rights as citizens, I think it was a lot more cliche like 10 years ago or five years ago. But I think in the last two years, a lot of blinders have been pulled off of people's eyes. And like, wait a minute, our government actually could become that tyrannical. So everything you're saying right now about the Second Amendment and gun rights, maintaining those freedoms across the board, I think uh, there's a lot of people who are opening, awakening up to that. Well, and while we hope good ideas spread here within our country and we continue to gather support for good legislation that plays offense, uh, we are also uh, noting what's happening around the world yes. where more and more gun owners have come under attack from their own governments right. needlessly. Foster, and that what yeah. follows that is a deprivation of rights that we would never tolerate in this country. Right. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah, I saw, and we'll wrap up here, guys, but I saw um, you know, the UK, Ukraine Russia issue. Obviously, it's it's hot right now, but they were training the people with wooden wooden firearms. I mean, they, the people don't have guns, so Russia's just going to probably roll right in there. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to have uh, a wooden uh, toy gun up against a no. mechanized division of yeah. the Russian military. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Congressman, we appreciate you coming in. Keep up the fight. Yes. Um, we'd love to have you on again. Spread the word. Let's go on offense on Capitol Hill and keep up the fight. So we no, appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. And, and the most important thing our activists can be doing around the country, reaching out to their members of Congress, but then repopulating the Congress with folks who will see these issues clearly with their historical, constitutional, and societal significance. Absolutely. We like that. Yes. Good stuff. Thanks, Thanks a lot.